Friday. I'd have found you sooner. I'd have never got married. I didn't call it right now. I understand what my husband was talking about now. He wants to come home to a peaceful place. I'm going through divorce number three, and I'm going to take a page out of your book. No reason to get married. Thank you. I was a, a pussy in my younger years, and uh, you got me late significantly listening to you, so thank you for that. I have a zero tolerance to drugs in my house, and they knew it, they violated it, and they were out. Now, I have a zero tolerance to drugs in my house, too. Did you know that? Oh. <laughs> oh, I have zero tolerance of drugs in my house, unless you brought some for me. I listen to you all the time, Tom, and I agree with everything you say. Like, you just, you spell it out, and girls need to listen up, too. You are not a misogynist. You are uh, one who speaks the truth, and I just, I totally want to be like you. Listening to your show has inspired me so much. I mean, I've already got my, my bachelor's and master's. I'm going back to get to my Ph.D. I bought a 2,500-square-foot house, and, you know, now it's like my bullpen's filled with four or five women, and she's just still, you know, kicking herself in the rear. So the way you hook up with girls is by not talking to them, right? Right. That doesn't work, Tom. Come on. How do you know? No, oh, because I've been in the game for a long time. You've done this, and it didn't work. You know, it works if you're Tom Likas, Michael Jordan. If what you're I'm on the radio. Work. What makes you think these women all know who I am? Oh, come on, Tom. The way you dress and the places you go to, just the way you present yourself and the clothing you wear. Yeah, you know I know. I, mean? but I, I know. I am Mr. GQ. I come from a largely Sicilian family. So do you have Mom, a hairy? Do you have a hairy chest? No, I do not. I just had to check. I have half Irish on my dad's side, so that ah, there's all that problem. So up. a freckled hairy chest. Last time I spoke to you was during Ask the Atheist, and I hope you're not disappointed in me, but I'm not an atheist anymore since I've been listening to you. You're my new god. I just wanted to let you know I think you're doing a public service. Well, I've been trying to service the public one listener at a time, as you may have heard. Mom destroyed me, all right? She would have the pot boiling on the stove and everything went into the boiling water. And then she tried tackling Greek food because we're Greek. She tried tackling horta. Now, do you know what horta is? No. This is like seaweed, all right? You could, if you could go to the Jersey Shore and munch on the stuff, washing up on the beach and have a better meal. I did that. Her name was Jennifer. My mom, one thing that I hate that she did was cook a huge pot of beans that would last for months. I had so many beans. One day I had to release the bathroom. Bathroom wasn't available. Long story short, I set it off in the house and shut down the entire house. Really? Sonic boom. Are you serious? And she could not understand how I did it, but it was all those damn beans. My mom wanted to let everybody know it wasn't her. So she was like, hey, you know, shouting out, that wasn't me, that was Shonda. Shonda, is that you again? Um, actually, Tom, no, I can I can do better than that one. Ah. <laughs> From Las Vegas, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. It's only entertainment, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. The different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Friday on the Tom Like Likas Show. Coming to you from Las Vegas with wide open telephones. Anything goes here. Anything at all. You just call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-TOM. 
666. Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Kevin. Well, yes. You might also, I told you that, um, that my, um, that my big brother's, uh, my big brother and, um, my big brother and my, and my mom, um, thought, um, think that you don't know what you're talking about. How old is your big brother? Eleven. He's eleven? Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, has your mom brainwashed him? Is that what happened? I think so. Yeah. So uh, tell me some of the things that uh, that you tell them about the show that they disagree with. Well, my my mom thinks uh, my my mo- my brother and my both of my mom think that that you don't have no idea what you're talking about. My brother says that your brain must be whacked. How many moms do you have? One. You have one. I thought you said both of my moms. Oh. Well. I don't live with my mom. Oh. So when you go there, your mom thinks uh, there's something wrong with you and something wrong with me. Um, something wrong with me and you. Now, what? Well, tell us uh, some of the things you've learned here, Kevin. Well, I've learned that you should... The only thing that women want from men is money. And so what do you do? Don't give them the money. Don't give them the money. Now, have you had any girls? You're nine years old, I see here. Have you had any girls come up to you and try to get your money? Yeah. And what do you do? Well, no girls have tried. So, so but usually I would just hang out with my friends. Oh, I see. Well, one of these days, the girl's going to come along, Kevin. They're going to try to get your lunch money or try to get you to buy them something. What are you going to do? Tell them, yeah, right. Yeah, right. You tell them, yeah, right. Exactly. Do you know any of the things that your mom or your brother object to about the show, things they don't like? My, my mom objects to, to you saying, um, to you keep saying that, uh, um, all that woman wants from men is money. Well, she thinks that's not true, but she she even knows that. She does. Is that the way your mom treated your dad? Not very much, but she treated all her all of her uh, to all of her other boyfriends. Oh, really? All of yeah. her other boyfriends? She tries to get money out of them. Yeah, smarter than that. Well, a, well, a lot of them gave it to him, but my dad's smarter than that. I can tell. Now, now, uh, how does she uh, get the money? What, what does she have them give her? Uh, gifts or cash? Or what is she getting? She's usually just buying her stuff. She's usually um, giving them, giving, um, give, getting the money so that she can, um, so that she can, um, um, buy, um, buy the food when she has enough food around. How does she get the guys to give her the money? What does she say? What does she do? She just asks, says, hey, I need $100. Oh, yeah. And they give it to you. Pretty much. Wow. And uh, you've told your mom that I would not approve of that, right? Yes, pretty much. And why does your brother have a problem with this? Isn't your brother benefiting from the things I'm teaching you guys? My brother thinks that you have no brain. He says that um, since he's um, since he's been trying to get a lot of girls, but me and my dad called him Gordo because he because he knows that um, he's fat, so there's no way he can he can really ever get a girl. <laughs> oh, really? And uh, I'll bet the girls try to get his money. Uh, well, one girl um asked him for a bag of chips. A bag of chips? Yeah. Did he give it up? Yeah. Now who's the retard? Him. Right. Exactly. And uh, do, what does your mom brainwash him? Yep. Boy, oh boy. So you sit listen to the show with your dad. Yep. And your mom hates that. Yep. Yeah, well, I love it, Kevin. Keep it up. All right. I think he's run out of juice there. 
Justin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Dom. First time, long done. Thank you, sir. Um, I heard you say that the term pussification was coined on your show. It originated here, yes. Originated. I know George Carlin said it back in 2001 on his HBO special. Did you oh, I said that? it. I said it way before 2001. Now, the, nobody loved George Carlin more than I did, and I interviewed him many times. Enough to know that he was a listener here. Ah, that's awesome. And whether it uh, sunk in subconsciously or not, uh, he, uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that he heard it here or on one of the other shows that copied it. All right. That's great. Could you but I've, been, I've been saying pussification since the 90s. Oh, wow. All right. It's a great term. It is. No, I, Justin, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh, when we continue, we have a, oh, this is good. We're going to talk to a caller who has an illegal alien girlfriend, and he wants to get rid of her. And I'm going to tell him how. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. In the industry I'm working in, I've been in it two years. I've already been promoted to the top of the level of where I can be after two years because I put that hard work in, and I didn't pay for everything. You know what I mean? I did it the way, the Tom Likas way, the man way. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. And being that we're in Vegas, uh, we'll talk to comedian Bobby Slayton coming up here in a minute or two. Yeah, <laughs> in the meantime, we can go to your calls here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going okay. Hey, I got a. I am I'm stuck in a situation right here, man. So I'll I'll lay it out as quick as I can. I've been with this girl for about two years. I'm engaged with her. We've been engaged for about a year, 23. Um, her family used to live where she's at right now, but unfortunately I had to leave. And I moved into her house to take care of business and make sure we live together and everything, right? I know that was a big mistake, but I went ahead and did it. So I've been living with her for about four or five months now. And I got to tell you, man, like... I love this girl, you know, and everything, but I just feel like right now, it's just, she's not really, I like, I'm in a sexless relationship, that's how I wanted to bring it up, but I just don't feel like she doesn't see what's going on right now, like, um, and she's an illegal and everything, I'm trying to help her to get that fixed and everything, but she thinks that by her living in the house and me moving in, that she owns it. I don't know what's going on with that or everything, but that, that has like a big roll onto it, and I mean, we've been arguing, you know, left and right and everything, and I'm just... I just don't know what I should do. I mean, well, you left out I... an important element there uh, that I mentioned before the break. What is that? What do you mean? Did you tell Ian that uh, she's illegal? Yes, she is. Well, it's important. Yeah, she is, and and I mean, to t to put it to the, to put it to this way, this is how I see it. Like, I mean, I grew up. You know, in a, in, a, in a real rough time and everything, I got kicked out of my house 15. So I know what it means to have second opportunities, to have chances. Like, I'm really appreciative about that. I don't know if I should mix my emotional feelings that if I leave her, should I care about anything about her being here by herself and her not having any family relatives? No, or that's not your problem. You are I, too young to have a girlfriend. I know that. I know that. But well, it's just if you know like, that, then it's not complicated. It's just that emotional thing that, you know, I, I, the only reason I'm still with her, I mean, I do love her and everything, you know, but it just doesn't seem like she wants to cooperate and work things out, you know? Like, I'm, I'm with her just because I believe in the second chance, you know? What are you, what are you fighting all the time? I mean, not, not all the time, but there, there are fights, you know, you know, real, you know, when it does happen, it's real well, big. Well, and we she should be kissing your ass. Right. Kissing your ass. Why do you tolerate that? It's, I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, I have. What do you mean you don't patience. know? Be a I man. Have patience, you know. Be a I, man. No, having patience. Screw patience. You don't have to put up with that. So why do you? 
just because I want to give her a chance, dude. I want to. I want to. I want her to see that. No, you know? there's no chances. It's a zero tolerance policy. You know what a second chance is? She's an illegal alien, and she found some sucker to let her move in. That's her second chance. So I just pretty much put that behind my head and don't even get my emotional feelings involved with it. Stop with the emotional feelings. You're too young to have a girlfriend. She's just a bitch. She's constantly complaining. Not good. What did you do to deserve that? Nothing, man. As a matter of fact, one... yeah, you got a point there, man. Just messy. I'm just, yeah, you know. I guess. I... What are you, a pussy? No, not even that, dude. It's just oh, you know. Yes, like, you I are. Off... Yes, you are because you tolerate that crap. She's had a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. There should be no goddamn arguing. She's lucky you took her in. Right, right. I guess I know what that means, man. You know what that means. You know, I had a relationship with someone who, while not illegal... uh, ...was uh, trying to become uh, a legal resident... And uh, I agreed to help her out. And the lack of appreciation of that made me permanently intolerant. Permanently intolerant of this crap. What? Right. Where is this sense of entitlement coming from? She's not entitled to live in your house. She's not entitled to get a green card. She's not entitled to have a boyfriend. Right, but she didn't come up to me for help, dude. She didn't, she doesn't, you know, like... Well, you saved her ass. She would have to leave the country if not for you, right? Pretty much. Right. You saved her ass. She should shut her mouth. And if she doesn't shut her mouth, you kick her the hell out. All right, Be Tom. a man. Step up to the plate. And by the yeah. way, you've got the ultimate weapon. She's an illegal alien. All right, Tom. Do you I understand you that, that that's you understand that's the ultimate weapon? It is definitely. I shouldn't. I mean, I never get. I never really gave a crap about anybody in life and everything. I mean, I lived on the streets, and it took me a hard time to get where I'm at right now, and. You know, just because I just thought that giving then people... Date a, then date a homeless person. <laughs> yeah, I get you, man. I you, get you don't deserve to be treated this way. End of story. All right, Tom. So when are you going to dump her? I mean... I'm just going to do it cold. That's it. I'm just going to look at my stuff and balance. That's it. Not even disappear. And if she opens her... the bills and everything. If she... Oh, by the way, do you own that house you're in? Uh, No, it's under her... It's under her mom's name. Great. So I can... I mean, I can just leave cold. I mean, I can leave and let her figure out how she's going to handle everything. I mean, she makes about, (laughs) you know, minimum... Less than minimum wage and everything, you know, but... I mean, I guess she's used to people taking care of her, and she doesn't really appreciate that what I'm doing. is. And you tell her if she says one word, you're turning her in. All right. Tell her. All right, man. You don't, you don't have to actually do it, David, but you tell her you will. Yeah. You tell yeah. her she doesn't have the right to say one word. Not one word. That's right. That's right, man. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Really appreciate this, man. All right. Get it done, David. Get it. Make me proud. Unbelievable. All right. In just a few minutes, we're going to talk with John Leptich of the East Valley Tribune newspaper, which is in the Phoenix metropolitan area. And uh, you may have heard there's uh, news on Awatuki Sioux. For those of you who have not heard uh, the latest, uh, John Leptich will have that for you. Uh, the newest information about Awatuki Sioux. 
And this is a brand spanking new program. Here we are in September in Las Vegas, here to go to the L.A. Kings game at the uh, MGM Grand Garden Arena, the preseason game between the Colorado Avalanche and the Kings. And uh, uh, so, as, as you know, we've had a lot of shows about Awatuki Sioux, but there is news, and it's coming up. Bobby Slayton is sitting right behind hey. me here. Hey! Hey, are we on now? We're on now. You know, you know what I just realized, Tom? First of all, I have not seen you in almost a year. It's been a you long know? time. I've been, been a long time, and you know, it's funny. You're talking to that kid. How old was that kid? Nine? He, the he, one who was nine, or this one I just talked to? The one you were just talking to. Oh, 21. You know, it's amazing, because this kid's not old enough to have a girlfriend. I'm too old to have a wife, but what's amazing to me <laughs> is all the years that I've done your show, and all the shows we've done, those live concerts and boys' night out, and every time I came in the studio, and I'm always complaining about my wife. Let me tell you something. Being here in Vegas and performing at Hooters Casino, I'm not here to do a cheap plug, but as long as you brought it up, yes. Wednesday through Sunday at 9 p.m. Uh, uh, but what's amazing is my, my marriage has never been better. And I, you know, I always come on, I complain, I bitch, I moan about my wife. But what's so great is the fact that my wife, I see her two days out of the week. And for all you guys out there, I'm not trying to throw this in your faces, but if you can find a way to see your wife two days out of the week, which is more than enough, and live in Vegas five days a week at Hooters Casino, it's a great thing. And, 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 and you know, I gotta give credit to myself because you know what? I've never cheated on my wife and walking through that casino you know five times a day and looking at the girls that work there and I'm so horny I, I, I feel like R. Kelly at Toys R Us where's my rim shot what do you you have three guys standing around I know you guys are doing a goddamn thing you know, just, thank you thank you appreciate that yes. um, wow where'd that come from um but it's just so great being in Vegas and it's, it's, it's such a great town uh, in the paper today though the fattest city in America uh, which doesn't surprise me um, is the fattest but you know what's amazing America's not the fattest country you know, it, it's, it's, you know what the fattest country is? Uh, no. Mexi Mexico. The second fattest country? The U.S. You know why? Too many Mexicans. <laughs> rip shot, rip shot. Come on, do I have to do everything around here? And look at me, and you know it's great too. You know, I got this whole Vegas lifestyle. Even when I do radio, even though nobody can see, that's a little late. Um, <laughs> Fire that guy. You know, I, I still, for radio, even get dressed up. People don't care about dressing up in this town anymore. But even when I go out to do radio, I get recognized all over the place. I put on a nice suit. You know, so look at me. I mean, it just... Oh, yes. It's, it's living the whole lifestyle, you know? Yeah, living like Dolce Vita here. Which, by the way, so... Can I get one word in? So, here <laughs> I am. So, the wife... Here's what's really funny, too. The wife... You know, when I took this gig a year ago, a year and a half ago, you know, you can see where any woman would be. Oh, wait, you're going to be living in Vegas five days out of the week at Hooters Casino and working there. And, of course, my wife didn't take to that very well. But then she realized, look, I'm playing crappy comedy clubs before that four days out of the week, making half the money I'm making now. And I said to my wife, you can come out anytime you want, you know. So she understands what a great gig I have. So she's coming out this weekend because it's her birthday. And uh, I can't be there for her birthday. So, I mean, I know we've probably talked about this before, but you've been married like Josh Eckenborn like 40, 50 times? Uh, okay. Exactly. Okay, now. And you know what a bitch it is to buy stuff. For women, because one wife doesn't like what the second wife likes. One wife, you know, the, you know, this doesn't fit. There's things in style. There's different seasons. Things are out of fashion. And it's impossible to shop for a woman. And my wife goes, well, I know what to get you. Well, of course you know what to get me. Go to Circuit City. Go to Fry's. Go to Best Buy. Close your goddamn eyes and spin around. And when you open your eyes, whatever you're looking at, I'll take one of those. If I don't like it, I'll sell it on Craigslist or give it to a friend or, or put it in the bathroom. It is so easy to shop for a guy. So today, right before I did your show, I, I go to the fashion mall, big mall here, and I have a Victoria's Secret. Now, Victoria's Secret, they haven't been in a lot of cities, but I've noticed the ones in Beverly Hills and the ones, the, the, the nicer the city is, the better the women are that work there. So the one in Vegas, these women look like they stepped right out of the catalog. I mean, they're mind-boggling. They're 22, 23 years old. And, you know, and so this, I go in there to buy my wife something. And I, I first of all, I'm not into lingerie and, and all that crap. Because, my, you know, my wife, I never understood how that place has stayed in business all these years. When you look at Victoria's Secret, you know, my wife would put on something and go, are you horny? You know, take it off. I'm horny without that. All that is is closing up your, your crotch. It's like you might as well just have a door there. You know what I mean? I don't get the sexy underwear. So, anyway. I have a doggy door, so at least I can get in and get out, you know, and go back to watching television. So I go into Victoria's Secret today, and this young lady, 22 years old, she recognizes me. She'd seen my show, and she says, oh, your wife's coming to town. What do you see her in? I said, a coffin. What are you doing this weekend? <laughs> Where's my rim shot? I want this guy fired. <laughs> He's a little slow. What happened to the rim shot? Here it comes. Where? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, it's a seven-second delay for, for dirty words, I understand. Not for rim shots. <laughs> oh, anyway, I'm exhausted. Just two minutes talking to you. I know that uh, you have a lot of people you want to get to. I just want to come by and say hello and invite your boys, your posse. You know, you guys are right across the street. 
You know, your hotel's right across the street from where I'm at Hooters Casino. Um, and that place, you know, it's doing really well. It's like a little downtown casino, which is on the Strip. Nobody on the Strip anymore has, like, $5 tables. You go to the MGM, you go to the Bellagio, the tables start at 20 bucks, and there's a line three deep to play, to give it, to throw your money away. So Hooters, you have ribs, all you can eat. And yeah. that's just the staff of Wamu. There you go, right there. Hey, hey by the way... Now, what were you talking to that guy? You, I know you got a, a guy you have to talk to from the Phoenix paper. What, what were you talking about? About what? Which? You said you had your... Awatuki Sue. Sue. What? I don't even know what that is. That's <laughs> the that's the chick who called our show oh. and said that she had murdered the father of her kid. Oh, okay. And it was, it was like on Geraldo. It was a big national crime store. You know, I don't know why I don't know that. Um, you know, it's interesting, too. Because you haven't seen me in a year. That's right. You know, you don't invite me over. Yeah, I'd come over anytime. Come on over. Anytime. You know, it's interesting. OJ's in town, and I've been trying to get a hold of him. I don't have his number. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. Because OJ Simpson, and I, you know, I keep threatening to put this on my website. I have a great shot of me and OJ at the Miami Improv. And um, he came to see me a couple of years ago when I was still working the road. And OJ came to my show. We had a few drinks after the show. He came back the next night, brought some friends. Could not have been a nicer guy. And I'll tell you, when I went home that next week, after my wife knew I was hanging out with OJ, she had never been so nice to me in, in, in her life. Oh, look you at know? that. And I think when you have the OJ you know that aura around you it just makes the wives a lot nicer a lot more pleasant to be around you know so i'm just trying to get a, oh, oh oh you know okay i know you have to go but i have to go i have a lot of things to do i work one hour a night what do i have to where am i going i got 23 hours a day to do nothing so last night and i i, I don't know her name but a famous porno star everybody told me she's a fa I, I knew her work but i didn't know her name i still don't know her name she came to my show last night now over the last year since I've been there, you know, Adam Sandler stopped by, the Smothered Brothers came by, like George Wallace stopped by, Roseanne Barr. You know, we've had a lot of people, Adam Sandler, and Robin Williams gave me a, a birthday cake uh, a couple of months ago on stage. So the staff at Hooters, you know, they're all, all these old Vegas people. So they're, they're okay, hey, Robin Williams is coming at you. But nobody was so excited as they were last night. When a porno star came in. It's amazing. To me. <laughs> I had a baseball player. I don't know who he was. But actually played for the Yankees, my favorite team. Didn't even know who the guy was. And they were kind of excited about that. They were kind of excited about Adam Sandler, Robin Williams. But the porno star, there's something about porno stars in Vegas. So this woman comes to my show last night with her husband. And I'd seen a lot of her movies. I, 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 if you come to my show tonight, I'll tell you her name. So she says to me, you know, Bobby, I just want to let you know in all my movies, she told me she never had one orgasm. That in you know, over 200 movies, she faked every one of them. And she explained to me that she's just an actress. I mean, she blew the whole thing. No, 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 no pun intended. She just blew the whole fantasy that I had of the fact that she said, she goes, I never had an orgasm. I said, so when you do these movies, you look like you're really into it. She says, all I'm doing is sitting there thinking, I want this guy to finish up, get his fat ass off of me. I want my money. I want to eat dinner. And I want to get out of here. And I'm thinking... I'm married to a porno star. Oh, and sometimes, fellas, you just don't know what you have, and it's right there in front of you. Bobby Slayton, Hooters Casino, five, right. what's it, four or five nights? How many nights a week? I'm now? there for, uh, Wednesday through Sunday, 9 o'clock. Wednesday through Sunday, and, uh, five nights a week. And I know you're not broadcasting in Vegas now, but uh, if anybody comes out from L.A., if you go to the box office, I guess they're doing two for one tickets because, you know, things are very slow in this town, and my show is doing quite well. And considering that Hooters is not right on the strip, I mean, it's between the Tropicana and a Motel 6 with transsexual hookers. It's not exactly a walking destination. It's like a, it's a cross street from the MGM. But I don't have a tiger. I don't have a puppet. I don't have midgets on bicycles with Beatles songs and trampolines. I don't have, you know, uh, smoke machines and fireworks and rockets and naked girls. I, I can't play guitar. I have no talent. I don't do impressions. I can't hypnotize you. I can't read your mind. So I'm doing pretty good. Look at that. Yeah. You you also I think the closest casino of of any note uh, to the airport is Hard Rock and you. Right. So so did you see me just well that's what's great. I, it's a Hard Rock. It is so close to the airport. So every Monday morning I'm on a plane, Wednesday I come back. I can't wait to get home to see my dog. My dog is what I want to see. My daughter's 20 years old now. I never see her. My wife's 55. I can't see her because I don't wear my glasses at home. That's how we keep my marriage together at home. I can't hear her. I can't see her. Things are getting good. Things are getting good. Sounds good to me. All well, right, Bobby. Good to see you. Good to see you, Tom. I'll Bobby you. Slayton. See him at Hooters Casino right here in Las Vegas, for God's sake. Tom Likens. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been listening to you since I was a little pussy. Wow. And now I get all the tail I can possibly think of, man. The Tom Likens Show. From Las Vegas, I'm Tom Likens. Wide open telephones on this Friday. 
Kwamu, rescued by J.P. Barton and Chase just before they went down in flames. And boy, they were. I'll tell you what. Woo-hoo. So you got that going on in the news. You got Barack Obama and John McCain. Yes, they are debating tonight. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, Awatuki Sioux, well, here's a development on Awatuki Sioux, and uh, we're going to talk it over with John Leptich, who is a reporter for the East Valley Tribune newspaper, and they are headquartered in Mesa, Arizona. John, good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, too, again, Tom. But the news is not good. The news is good for Awatuki Sioux, however. Um, despite her admission on your show that she killed her boyfriend, the, uh, the county attorney, Maricopa County Attorney's Office in Phoenix area, decided she will not be charged with first-degree murder, and they've gone along with the original finding that it was an accident, or excuse me, suicide. They have, however, charged her with a filing a false police report for saying her cell phone was stolen. Yeah. Uh, that that ought to be uh, the same uh, penalty as tearing the mattress tag off your mattress. I would imagine. Exactly. Probably that's probably worse. Unbelievable. Uh, what was the reasoning by the Maricopa County attorney? They would not say, but I have a good source who who tells me, and I, I think you and I may have spoken about this before, and I know I wrote about it. In the uh, interview, interviews they did with the dead guy's mom and one of his sisters, they said he was suicidal. Now, what I, why, I thought that might have some weight, but I also thought it would have weight because he kept saying he chewed himself in the, in the my head or the mouth. He was shot in the heart, as you know. And, and, you, and by the and, way, your listeners know. people have said, I'm going to kill my mother or I'm going to kill myself. Uh, everybody has said something like that at one time or another, and some people more than others. But they don't all kill people. You're absolutely right, but the sources I have indicate that they took that into account. They won't say that. They will, they will not confirm or deny that they took that into account. Uh, the police worked long and hard on this case. How do they feel about this? I haven't talked to them. I'm sure they're not pleased uh, getting you know something extremely minor, a misdemeanor. She's not going to get anything for the other. So, uh, yeah, they, they put a lot of resources into it, Tom. I, I, saw, I saw the police report. Um, a lot of work, a heck of a lot of work put into it. I'm sure they're not, not pleased at all. Now, um, one of the things I've wondered throughout this whole process, and you may may or they may not know the answer, but I have wondered whether or not Awatuki Sue is, and her name is Megan Vice, by the way, uh, whether or not Awatuki Sue is actually brought to trial or brought to justice or convicted or call it what you will. Um, I have to wonder what it's like being her boyfriend, her employer. Her I, neighbors I in El Mirage. I mean, how do you feel knowing that that that's who's your neighbor? Uh, she might be right up there with OJ as a partner. Really? Uh, I, w- I would think. Uh, you know, I, people. I know people at the hospital that she works at. Uh, nobody has said they know her, um, and which seems a little hard to believe. Now, she had been telling a lot of people she was a nurse. She is not a nurse. That has never been a nurse. She's just a radiology technician. Uh huh. And what was uh, the victim's occupation there at the hospital? I, I believe he was in a sim- the same department. I don't recall. Wow. But I, and I believe I know that that's. I, I'm not sure if they met at the same hospital or another, but they did meet in the course of work. Now, uh, does this mean that it's a dead issue? This is it. It's done. There's no bringing it back. Yes, that's correct. They. Um, they went for it, and I, and, I, and I think, Tom, that I, I kind of expected this when I saw how long it was taking from when they had filed charges. I remember t- talking with you and your, and your listeners when, when they had filed charges. That's been a bit ago, and, and you know, usually if it's a slam dunk and they're going to do it, they're going to do it pretty quick. And it, 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 took, them, it took them time. Wow. Well, I know uh, many of our listeners have followed the Awatuki Sioux story and have wondered what the outcome would be, and we knew it was a long shot, uh, if only because, and now this is where my uh, uh, opinion gets into the mix, uh, if only because she's a woman, and uh, even if it's uh, true what she did, uh, it's highly unlikely they're going to go aggressively after her the way they would if it were a man who were accused of this. That's, 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 that's very possible. 
I, you know, I, I really don't know. I don't know what the, the, the process was in their thinking. They, did, they really didn't want to share that. Um, county attorney just issued a statement, didn't really want to talk about it. Well, all I could say from my own uh, part in this whole thing uh, is if someone called me and bragged about killing the father of their child again, I would do the same thing. I, I agree with you. I don't care how much. And believe me, my staff worked long and hard uh, in their cooperation with the Phoenix Police Department uh, in digging up the phone numbers, going through thousands and thousands of phone records. And I think uh, police, police did an, you, did, you and your staff and police did an excellent job. No and doubt, bringing, and even bringing this forward, I commend that. Those are the people I commend for for doing what they had to do, and I, I think the the police thought that they had something here. Otherwise, I don't believe they would have brought the charges. And anybody who thinks that's a funny thing to do, call a radio station and send the police department on a wild goose chase. Uh, it is not only costing yourself money because you're a taxpayer like everybody else, uh, but the police department in Phoenix and many other big American cities, is stretched to the limit. They don't have time for these kind of games. They have better things to do. They absolutely do. And believe me, the last thing I wanted to do was to cause them any kind of problem. I just wanted to uh, to be here to cooperate. If they wanted more information, great. Uh, and and uh, their uh, dealings with us have been fantastic. The Phoenix Police Department was just great with us. They, In my view, they did a great job. They didn't give up. They were tenacious. Phoenix is lucky to have these guys, and I wouldn't want to live next door to this woman. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> right, I think it's interesting that she lives in a town now named El Mirage. <laughs> 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 which, think... is, which, is right, which is right next to the town called Surprise. So <laughs> that's the, Those are facts. I know. John, thank you so much for everything you've done on this story as well All and right, for John. coming on and updating us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. That's John Leptich of the East Valley Tribune newspaper. The uh, Maricopa County attorney will not file charges against Awatuki Sue in the death of her, the father of her child. Oh, God, I'm heartbroken. I am heartbroken about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Tessa. On the Tom Like His Show, wide open telephones on this Friday. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm hey, great. Tom. What up? What's going on? I'm uh, I'm calling from Vancouver, Canada, and yeah. uh, I'm actually looking for your help. What do you need? Uh, well, I'm in a contest for a rock station uh, up in Canada here, and what I'm trying to do is get a job as a morning co-host. If you get the job, you also get a Mercedes B-Class car. That would be fantastic. And basically, what I need is a media celebrity to be interviewed on Monday morning on the show. And I thought of you. A media celebrity? Wow. Uh, I, uh, I yeah. Wonder how the CR, I wonder how the CRTC would feel about me going on the air Monday morning in Vancouver. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sure they wouldn't have a problem with it. Well, I, you know, I, I better be careful not to call anybody a retard. Yeah, easy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. So, so I would go. Uh, I would go on the air in the morning with, uh, and this is some wacky uh, morning rock show. And that would be it. It would just be for about five under under, under ten minutes, just uh, on this rock show, and you get to get interviewed. And uh, I thought you were a little uh, a little different than probably all the other people that people are going to pick. So. I thought of you. Oh, well, uh, you know what, Tessa? If uh, you'll give uh, uh, Ian all the details over there, uh, I'd be more than happy to do it if only so I can get back on the air in Vancouver for a morning. That is fantastic. Because, uh, you know, it, it wasn't pretty when I left the air. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, now I'm a notorious media celebrity uh, uh, in uh, Vancouver, in case you didn't know. Oh, in case you didn't know, I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. They know you? Uh, no, I was just quoting Anchorman, you know. Oh, oh, yes, well, there you go. But no, no, I uh, I was the one who uh, offered uh, $150,000 uh, to the news anchor, Lynn, what's her last name? Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I offered her $150,000 to, to flash my audience. Oh, no way. Uh, I, off I, offered no. I offered to give it to uh, the charity of her choice. Oh, and she, she said she, what? 
She flipped. Oh, no, she refused to do it. She couldn't be bothered. I started at, uh, I think, 50 or 75,000 and kept raising it. Wow. Well, I don't know why she wouldn't have taken that. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, well, because I guess we'd find out what kind of knocker she really has, and that could end her news career right there. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yes. I can't remember her name, but, uh, you know, she just took herself very, very seriously and, uh, of course, did not like me at all, uh, even before I made the offer. This, this all started because I was watching TV there, and uh, my name came up, and she rolled her eyes. I was not happy about that. What? Oh, come on. You know what? You shouldn't take life too seriously. Just, you know, she did. Go, go she flow. took life seriously. Yeah, go with the flow. Absolutely. I mean, if I offer $150,000 just to show your breasts. Um, I would take it. I would take it. Lynn Collier, that's her name. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? I do know who you're talking about. She takes herself very seriously. <laughs> the more seriously she took herself, the more I upped the offer. Well, I don't know. I don't know why she wouldn't have taken it. Aren't there starving uh, people in uh, British Columbia who needed that help? There are many, many starving people, yeah, for sure. Yes. Many of whom used to play for one of the two hockey teams. Oh, yeah. Seriously. All right, Tessa, you hang on and uh, give the information to uh, to Ian. Great. Thank you. And we'll be in touch with you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Good luck. Thank you. We'll see if they even let me on the air in Vancouver, British Columbia. All right. It's a brand spanking new episode of the Tom Lyka Show coming to you from Las Vegas with wide open telephones on this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. 1-800-5800-866. Next hour, me, you, and that big 50,000-watch stick out there, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.